All right, and we are recording. So to begin with, um, before we jump to the material, are there any any questions from uh, from the the material or homework, previous material or homework? And you can you can either answer in the chat uh, if you have any any questions, or let me know um, in in the audio if you comfortable enough with that. Um, I'll keep my eye on the chat uh, in case anybody has any questions. Um, I know there's there is a little bit of delay in and when I say something and, and when it appears on the chat. So I'll, I'll keep my eye there in case anybody has any questions. Uh, but I am not currently seeing any questions. Okay, I'm going to switch to the digital digital paper here. And I'm going to pull up the chat. There we go. Okay. So today we're going to lecture a little bit in chapter one. Um, I want to get chapter one finished. I don't know if we'll get there today. Uh, I do want to give you guys uh, some some time to meet together as a group today, which is why we're meeting digitally here. Um, so we're going to we're going to finish up uh, section one C, and we're going to start section one D. Go as as far as we can in that, and then we'll we'll split into groups and uh, go from there. So. Uh, so that's the plan for today. So let's go ahead and begin. Um, so we have a little bit, a little bit left in section one C left. Uh, not a whole lot. Uh, just one example that I wanted to go through, which is uh, on our sets and Venn diagrams. So last class. We finished up, um, we started with the two-way table and then uh, looked at how to fill that out. And at the very end of that, we saw how do we get uh, a Venn diagram from a two-way table. If We have variables, uh, in, the, in that case, two variables. And how do we fill out the information on the Venn diagram using the table? Today we're doing the opposite, we're given going to be given a Venn diagram uh, of a survey or a study of some sort and we'll have to pull information from that. Uh, so this is kind of the opposite of that, of what we did last, last time, the example we, we ended with last time. Uh, so let's go ahead and start. So I'm going to have a Venn diagram here. And this one is going to be a little bit different from the example we had last class, uh, because last class we had just two variables. So we had two sets that we were considering. But for this example, we're going to be actually looking at three sets and uh, so three variables. So it's a little bit different from our last example. Okay, and so this diagram is going to be people at a conference. So looking at some, some sort of conference here. Uh, this first set is going to be men. This second set is going to be college degree. And the third set is going to be employed. Okay, so we have these three sets. And uh, whenever, you are, whenever you are analyzing uh, a Venn diagram like this, it's always a good idea to look at what set you are given and then consider what is the uh, what is the opposite of that? So our first set here in the le in the uh, top left corner, first circle set, is min. 
And so you want to ask yourself, all right, if, if someone is not a man, what are they? And for our purposes, they're going to be a woman. Um, obviously, we can get more complicated than that, but uh, we want to keep things relatively simple. And then same thing for a college degree. If you don't have a college degree, then in this case, that's not having a college degree. And then uh, what is the opposite of employed? If you're not employed, you are unemployed or you don't have a job. So uh, those are what we are looking at here. Uh, now the numbers that we're dealing with uh, in this, this first portion, we have three. Uh, here we have five, 10 in the middle part, seven here, two here, eight, five, and five. Okay, so this example here, we are given, again, uh, people at a conference. This can be used to, to really look at any, any kind of survey or study. And again, this is different from our last example in that we are looking, we're considering three variables instead of just two. So um, that is portrayed by the, by the three sets, the three circles, instead of just the two that we had last, last time. Uh, so the first question that we want to ask, so we can ask several different questions, but the first question we want to ask with this is how many, let's say how many men at the conference have a college degree? Good, yeah, I'm already seeing the, some of the answers there, but let's, let's, uh, let's analyze it a little bit more in depth. That's good, That's, that is the correct answer, but let's analyze it in depth here. Um, so we can redraw our Venn diagram. This is, this is a, not the only way to get the answer, but this is certainly a helpful way to look at it. Uh, and here we're looking at two variables. We're looking at uh, men, and college degree. So we want to consider those two uh, sets in our Venn diagram. So we have men is here, college, college degree is this one. And so uh, how many men have a college degree? That's going to be the portion that is where these two circles intersect right here. Notice in our Venn diagram, that is these two areas. Here, one with the five, one with the 10. So what we get is this is going to be five plus 10, which is 15. Okay, uh, any questions up to this point? And again, you can either uh, type those in chat or uh, use the audio, however you feel most comfortable. Okay. And so I'll keep my eye on chat. I'm not seeing any questions, but I will address any of those that come along. Okay, so, so far so good. Um, let's look at another question using this Venn diagram. So I'm gonna have to scroll down and then scroll back up when we're answering this. How many employed women Uh, are at the conference. Okay. Excellent. Yep, that is that is the answer. Uh, but let's let's uh, again do this a little more in depth. So we can recreate our Venn diagram, and we have two variables here: uh, women and employed. So those are the two variables we're looking at. If I scroll back up to the Venn diagram, all right. Um, employed, that is one of our sets, uh, but women is not. So instead of using women, since that's not a, a clearly labeled set, explicitly labeled, labeled set here, uh, what set are we going to consider instead?
or another way to look at that is what um yes that's right not not men is is the correct one so women in this case that's the opposite of men it's it's uh you're a woman if you're not a man so we're going to look at again we have our our uh, top left set that's men and then employed is this bottom set here now this one uh for the employed part that is anything that is inside the circle so that is this portion of the circle for women that's anyone that is not a man so that's going to be the outside of the men's set so that's this set here and we are looking at where these intersect, which then is this middle area here of our Venn diagram. So if we scroll back up and look at our Venn diagram, uh, this has two parts. We have one is two and one is eight. So we have two plus eight is 10. Excellent. Uh, we can also be a little bit a little bit less explicit uh, how many how many women are at the conference okay and so again here when we're looking at women, that's the opposite of men. So we're looking at anything that is outside of that set. And in this case, so in the previous two examples, we're looking at two variables. Here we're only looking at one variable. Okay, so we go back to our, to our Venn diagram. Everything outside of the man circle of the men circle and here we have four, uh, four parts of that, two, eight, five, and five. So that's going to be how many women are at the conference. So we have two plus eight plus five plus five gives us 20 women are at the conference. Okay, uh, any questions up to this point? And if you do, again, uh, you can either use the audio or type it in chat, uh, whichever you're more comfortable with. And I am keeping an eye on chat in case there are any questions that pop up. Okay. So then the last question that I want to ask with this example is how many employed men with a college degree are at the conference. Okay, so again, we want to consider the variables that we're looking at here. We have three variables. Employed is the first one, men is the second, and having a college degree is the third. So we look up at our, our Venn diagram. In this case, it is the easy case because that is each one of the uh, explicitly labeled sets. So we look at how, um, the intersection of those three circles and the number that we have there is 10. That is correct. So we have 10 employed men at the conference. Okay, good. So, Again, that's, uh, this is kind of doing the opposite of what we did with our very last example, last class. Um, instead of creating the Venn diagram, we are given the Venn diagram and uh, we pull information from, from the, uh, the Venn diagram, depending on what the question is. And so, um, just as, as a quick reminder here, There we go. Um, 
since we have three sets, we are looking at three variables. So, so uh, a quick way to, to look at that is however many variables you have, those are the number of sets that you have. Uh, generally, you'll have them intersecting. So we're, we're probably not going to look at more than three variables at a time, just, just for the sake of complexity. Um, or keeping things less complex. So that's section uh, one. See, that was the last example here. Um, and again, it's, it's, uh, it can be a little bit tricky, this last example, if you haven't seen this before or are unfamiliar with, with Venn diagrams of the material. Uh, so I did want to go through, uh, through that example before having the homework due. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and switch to section 1D then. So uh, 1D is going to be our last section in chapter one. And we are looking at analyzing arguments. So, so in this section, we are going to bring back uh, what we did with our Venn diagrams and apply that to our arguments. And we're going to be looking at uh, two types of arguments. Um, only going to apply the Venn diagram to one of them, but uh, there are two types of arguments here. So let's go ahead and first define the two arguments. So we have uh, the first one is an inductive argument. So an inductive argument inductive argument makes a case for a general conclusion or rule. So we can say it's a general conclusion or a general rule, however you want to think of it, from specific premises or cases. So what we have going on here, we're going to have some, some cases or premises, uh, or I guess the more accurate way is some cases stated as premises. And we're going to take these, these cases and we're going to come up with a general rule um, that describes what is going on in these cases. So this is going to be a general rule, which is our conclusion. The second type of argument is kind of Oh yeah, uh, thank you. I, I should probably try that out. <laughs> um, the second type of argument, the deductive argument, is kind of doing the opposite. So instead of, instead of uh, looking at specific cases coming up with a general rule, we're going to start with general rule and apply it to a specific case. And that's what we call a deductive argument. So a deductive argument uh, here we're going to uh, make a specific conclusion, makes a specific a case for a specific conclusion. from a more general uh, premise or rule. So we're going to have, in this case, for our deductive argument, we're going to have a general premise Um, there, there are some, there, there's some uh, 
other chat options as well. So there have been some comments, but anyways. Um, makes a case for, so here, we're gonna have a general rule as one of our, our premises. So we're gonna have a general rule as a premise. So this is going to be our premise. And we're going to apply it to a specific case, which then is going to be our conclusion. So these are the two types of arguments that we are looking at. Okay, so let's look at some examples. And I'm gonna try, let me try uh, typing this out. It might be a little bit better for legibility. Uh, so here's going to be an example. Let's call this example one. And here we're going to have a couple of premises. So uh, premise one is going to be birds fly into the air, but eventually come back down. Premise two is going to be uh, people who jump into the air, fall back down. Premise three is going to be balls thrown up into the air, come back down. And our conclusion from this is going to be what goes up must come down. Okay. So this is the first example that we're looking at. Now is this argument, is this a, an inductive argument or a deductive argument? Are we uh, starting from, a, uh, from specific cases and forming a general rule from those cases? Or are we starting with a general rule and making a statement about a specific case from that, from that general rule? In this case, inductive, yes, that is correct. Because notice our premise, our first premise, birds fly into the air but eventually come back down. That's a specific case. Second one, people who jump into the air fall back down. That's the second case, specific case. Third premise, balls thrown up into the air come back down. That's a third specific case. And our conclusion is a generalization of what's going on here. Well, things that go up seem to come down. So our, so our conclusion, our induc induction, if you will, is what goes up must come down. So this is an inductive argument. That is correct. Inductive. Okay, now um, I'm gonna ask a question. This is going to feel like, uh, feel like a trick question. Is the conclusion for this argument true? Seeing some yeses and some noes. What would make this argument false? So what would make this argument or this conclusion false is if there was something that went up that did not come down. And in this case, think of uh, satellites that we're sending to say uh, Mars or uh, space shuttles. These are things that go up that do not come down. So note the conclusion is false. So here we have to be a little bit careful when we are dealing with inductive arguments. Inductive arguments are, uh, we can never prove the conclusion. And uh, the reason for this is we are, we are looking at specific cases and then coming up with a general rule using those cases. However, this cannot be used to prove an argument or to prove the general rule because we cannot possibly consider every single case. 
there might be a case that we are not considering. So take, for example, if you didn't think of uh, rockets or satellites or the space, space shuttles, um, then you might think that this is, this is true. Or take, for example, um, if we go back centuries before uh, rockets were invented, then the rule would seem to apply. Anything that would come up would come down. That, that always did apply until we, we could uh, break out of Earth's uh, gravitational field. So when we are making a general, a general rule, we can never prove the conclusion is, is true using induction. Um, because again, we can't possibly consider every case. There might be a case we are not considering or something uh, in terms of technology or knowledge that has not occurred that is going to make that conclusion false. So what we are going to do instead of analyzing the conclusion um, is to determine whether the argument is a strong or a weak argument. So uh, we evaluate an inductive argument based on its strength. Is the argument strong or is the argument weak? In this particular case, we are looking at three specific cases, three premises looking at birds, people, balls. There's a whole lot more in, in the world than just birds, people, and balls. There's a whole lot more. So in this case, I would argue that this is a weak argument, a weak inductive argument, because we're not really considering a lot of cases. Now, there might be You might want to argue with that and say that this is a strong induct inductive argument, and I might accept that as as uh, I might accept that as an answer on the exam. The take, for example, if I asked on an exam if if uh, if an inductive argument was strong or weak, uh, as long as you support uh, what you are saying, as long as you support your solution. So if you say weak, why is it weak? In this case, I'm saying it's weak because there are only three premises. There's a whole lot more in the world than just birds, people, and balls. Um, but if you say it's a strong argument, again, if you, if you make, uh, make your case for that and convince me, then I would, I would uh, accept that as well. Uh, but it, again, you have to explain why. Uh, let's look at another example. Example two. So here we're going to have one premise. Uh, every day of my life, the sun has risen in the morning. And my conclusion is going to be the sun will rise tomorrow. Um, Actually, let's, let's rewrite this. The sun will always rise in the morning. There we go. Uh, is this argument inductive or deductive? So are we starting with a specific case and making a general rule from it or starting, a, uh, starting with a general rule and using that to explain a specific case. Okay, I would say this is going to be an inductive argument. We're starting with a specific case every day. So one day of my life, the sun has risen in the morning. And the general rule that I am 
coming up with from, from this, these cases is that the sun will always rise in the morning. That's our general rule. So here the conclusion is that is a general rule. So this is an inductive argument. Is this a strong or a weak inductive argument? Well, how many cases are we considering here? Every day of my life. So I guess that might depend on how, how old you are. Let's go with myself, 33 years, 365 days in a year. That's uh, 365 times 33 is 12,045 cases in this case. So is that strong or weak? In this case, I would say that this is a strong inductive argument. Okay. Um, any questions on the inductive arguments? So again, with the inductive arguments, we're starting from a specific case or specific cases, and we're coming to a general rule as our conclusion. Uh, whereas a uh, deductive argument, we're taking a general rule and applying it to a specific case. I'm going to go ahead, um, I'll give you an example of a, of a deductive argument, but I do want to split into groups here really soon. So I'm not, we're, we'll, we'll start next class with this example. So this will be our third example. Uh, premise one is going to be all politicians are married. Premise two is Senator Harris is a politician. And our conclusion is Senator Harris is married. So here, notice one of our premises is all politicians are married. That is a general rule. All of something are one way. In this case, all politicians are married. That is a general rule. And premise two, we're looking at a specific case, Senator Harris. Senator Harris is a politician. So our conclusion says something about Senator Harris. In this case, Senator Harris is married. Um, what we're going to look at Starting next class, as we're going to, again, I'm going to uh, present this, this argument. We're going to look at um, whether this argument is valid or invalid and whether it is sound or not sound. Um, so with, with inductive arguments, we're only looking at, is it strong or weak? Uh, for deductive arguments, we have a little bit more. So, uh, but this is, this is an idea of where we're headed with our deductive arguments. Uh, but let's do that for next class. So. Uh, let's go ahead. I'm going to, um, as soon as I find my paper here, I'm going to split into groups. So I'm going to stop the screen share here. And I'm going to stop the recording since we don't need